Guafide, Guahusi Francesca, and Guahusi Cami. This, this is, is from, from our nanas for our nannies. A video series about learning how we can take part in a food sovereign and food secure future. In the last episode, we looked at food sovereignty from the perspective of our home gardens, community gardens, and even took a look at a small family run farm. In this episode, we are zooming out to see the big picture, how food sovereignty affects our individual health, community health, and how it all connects back to the health of our land and water. We want to end this series with a holistic view of our food issues, because our wellness is a direct reflection of food and the cultural, environmental, and political climate we live in. Because lifestyle diseases like diabetes, heart disease, and chronic illnesses like cancer are so prevalent in our islands, along with the compounding threat of COVID-19, we felt it was best to include the voices of holistic health coaches in this series. Taking care of our health is so important, now more than ever. Cami interviewed Livia Marotti, a local health coach working to bring what she's learned off-island to the community through wellness events and teaching. Yeah, my name is Livia Marotti and I'm the founder of Eno Wellness Collective and we specialize in holistic events, retreats, and health coaching programs. Francesca spoke with Joshua Dunn, another local health coach who grew up in Guahan who works with clients to build a healthy relationship to food and to accomplish their life goals. My name is Joshua Den. I'm a certified health coach. I work at New Gen Physical Therapy. We kind of look at the wellness side. Uh, we're running programs that help people with diabetes and sort of chronic disease, metabolic syndromes, anemia, just overall health problems. Yeah, so for me, the word wellness or well being, when I think about what it means, it is really showing up as the best version of yourself and how can you take care of yourself and nourish yourself so that you can show up as the best version of yourself for your family, for your community, and, and different spaces. Well, this means to me, I think it really means sort of being, or feeling really good and inspired about your actions. Of course, right, this encompasses the physical, mental, spiritual, environmental, uh, your, your social context, and, and the work that you do, right? Um, to really feel well means that you're, you're syncing up these realms in a way that works for you, and works for your family, and, and the world as, as we know it, and what we want it to become. I'd say maybe like a 3.5 to 4. Uh, like I was saying earlier, my background's in public health, so I know a lot of statistics, right? Uh, you know, two-thirds of people are overweight or obese. This really substantially, you know, increases the likelihood for people to develop chronic disease. Uh, chronic disease is really stealing people's money away, stealing the quality of life away, and really huge, huge problems, huge problems come, come from that. What plays a big role in, in, in that sort of 3.5 rating is just kind of the setup that we're in right now. Uh, if you want to be a healthier person or be at that 10 individually, you have a lot of things working against you, right? You, you go to the store, you know, water's a dollar, Pepsi's a dollar, right? What's wrong with this picture? Right? It should it should be that the, the healthier option is the cheaper cheaper option. And there's all these political mechanisms that make it that way, right? So US subsidies are going to these big agricultural, you know, production where they're just making corn and soy and they spray them with pesticides and and then you eat that and you inherit that and you know the pesticides are, you know, the studies are showing that it's ruining the, the gut microbiome and causing a dysbiosis there. Well, historically, I feel like there's a lot of trauma around food, right? Um, the war, the Japanese occupation, and, you know, all the atrocities there, and then being reoccupied by the United States and, and all of that food and that American culture that came here uh, really sort of hindered our own uh, sustainable 
you know, behaviors and practices that we had before that. I think a lot of the, the sort of food cultures and behaviors that we have now evolved out of that trauma, right? Uh, comfort foods, right? We, we, we see certain foods and they, they trigger, you know, memories and, and, and then we, we seek them out because they, they make us feel good inside. Politically, we're unincorporated territory of the United States, so that kind of sets us back in a lot of ways, right? So the, the military has, you know, a third of the land here that used to be farmland, right? And land that we use to sustain ourselves here on, on this island. Now the military has it. Who knows what they're doing with it? They have been known to essentially poison it, right? PCBs, Asian Orange, you know, all of these things. Who knows what they're doing now? Uh, our political status now makes it so we can't really know. And the political status makes it so that they can continue doing whatever they want here. Uh, testing bombs in the Northern Islands. Uh, who knows what that sort of fallout looks like for health and the soil and the air here. Now, all of these things, you know, are major factors in terms of how healthy we are. Ultimately it comes down to how your personal decisions can affect all of that, right? So getting active in sort of a, a political realm, talking to your leaders and saying, hey, this is how I feel about the situation. Uh, this is how it affects environmental health and having those leaders advocate for a better political status for our place so that we can decide to be healthier for ourselves as a whole. Um, also, just realizing that these, these small, tiny decisions cumulatively add up to big, larger, you know, grand health for everybody. Going down the row at the fiesta, mm -hmm. picking out what you're eating, you know, rice is always going to be there. Mm -hmm. Some type of meat or fish is always going to be there. But how can we also make sure that the salad isn't the part that's not touched by anyone right. in the family? Right. Or that we have local fruit, local watermelon, dragon fruit, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. And how can we sort of make it so that it's even? Yes, you can have your rice and yes, you can have your fish or your protein, but how do you also make it balanced with the fruits and veggies? and really using the local product that we have here. Awesome. So I always think about how do we go back to basics. A lot of the things that we do to become healthy, we already sort of inherently know, right? You know you need to drink a lot of water and mm -hmm. stay hydrated. You know to not really eat processed, sugary foods. Right. Um, these are all things that we already know. It's just building a lifestyle around that. And especially with you know the food, the amazing food that we have here, that you know thought of making sure that you're eating local seasonal organic food that starts right with what we're growing here on Guam you know so I think that there's this connection between health being something and wellness being something that is hard to do but it really doesn't have to be this drastic change it's starting small and really incorporating small and mindful habits into your life. Becoming an independent nation with laws and policies that make sense, right? That encourage people to be healthy, that make it convenient and easier for people to be healthy, that helps farmers get it done, right? On a real level that actually can feed the population here, right? That really decreases the, the carbon footprint for the globe, really. And in terms of my own work, I, I want to see that healthcare becomes more of the mentality that addresses the root cause of things, right? So we're not just ordering labs and then treating the numbers on the paper, but we're treating the whole person, right? Uh, it's not health is not just about food and exercise. It's 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 so much more. So you know, my vision with Ina Wellness Collective goes much further than just events. Um, I mentioned this before that 
you know, with health and wellness, my goal is to make it accessible to people mm -hmm. and to have a balance between, you know, there are, is going to be part of the community that wants to go off for three days and have a beautiful wellness retreat. But then there's also a part of the community that needs um, support with mental health or, you know, working with children, working in schools. And so there is that, my vision is really to serve the community in the diff with the different types of people that we have here. And for me personally, like the passion of mine is really to work with children more. So to make sure that health and wellness and mental health um, and physical health and emotional health, that all of that starts um, when we're young and then is built into our families and so on. So that's a big dream. <laughs>
guys, this is Editing Francesca. I'm just popping back in to say a huge thank you for supporting us by watching this series. Don't forget to leave a comment, press that like button, hit subscribe. We're really hoping that this series is something that is valuable to you in the community. We'd also like to say another huge thank you to Josh and Livia for giving us their time and expertise for this episode. If you'd like to find out more about what they do, you can look in the description box below for their information. Get in touch. And of course, another huge thank you, Sana Maasi, Sizos Maasi from me and Kami and the rest of the team at Micronesia Climate Change Alliance for your support. Stay home, stay safe, and be well. Sana Maasi, adjust.